Well, I'm delighted to say here on McLean's TV, we're joined once more by Stephen MacDonald of Armagh, fame and now the Armagh on the 21 manager as well. That's a bit of work for you too in the new year, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, and it's a challenge that I'm looking forward to. Um, you know, I always wanted to get back involved in county football and no matter where and getting involved with the youth coming through uh, the county and, you know, being involved with the under playing ones is a great stepping stone for me. And of course now we're here with uh, McLean's TV, but you, you can't get involved in betting your own team, you know, but away from that, you know, if you're a betting man, would you have a few pound on arm on the 21s? Have you, have you plenty of talent, Stevie? Listen, it's like every other county, there's plenty of talent coming through. It's about how how well it's managed and, you know, I've got certainly a hard job ahead of me, you know, to try to manage the talent coming through. There is plenty of potential within our mile but as I said you know can we get the best out of them lads Stevie we're facing into 2014 obviously for the GEA we've got all the ancillary competitions coming up the McKenna Cup uh, and we now have the use in 2014 of the black card yeah. you know I must admit I am not in favour of the black card I'm okay like all GEA people willing to let it go and see how it works but how many cards do we need to sort out the problem, surely you know the likes. People talk about about um, Sean Cavanagh's tackle being a black card. In my opinion, Sean Cavanagh's tackle was a red card. Yeah, I would agree. But um, you know, I've been at a couple of FA Cup matches so far. Where um, actually the few matches I have been at, there was no black cards dished, dished out, and you know maybe there was a few incidents where it should have been dished out. So you know the questions still have to be asked. Do the referees understand the the, the rules? Um, do they know what? what warrants a black card or what doesn't warrant a black card you know I think it's going to be very difficult for the referees um, throughout the National League and the McKenna Cup um, you know to to spot the difference between a, a black and a yellow and, and, and even a red card you know in, in some instances but you know it's yeah, I suppose it's going to be trial and error we have to see um, how the games develop and, and how, how the cards are produced and you know um, I'm not a fan of it I think there's too many cards in the game at the minute you know and, and the physicality element is coming out of the game year on year but um, certainly you know it will be interesting to see how it um, you know reacts over, over the first uh, few weeks of it uh, you're not a fan, I'm not a fan, and yet if you listen to the, the popular press, we're almost the, the dinosaurs of the game because uh, listening to some of the people who proposed this, they thought it as the, the be-all and end-all of uh, the, the modernisation of Gaelic games. I remain to be convinced. Yeah, no, y y listen, I don't think um, the black yard is going to improve our game uh, dramatically whatsoever. Um, I think what would improve the game is if, if they look at the performance levels of, of referees and even the fit fitness levels of the referees. Um, you know, there has been some key games uh, decided by a poor decision over the last couple of years. And, you know, I'll, I'll hold my hands up and say referees have an extremely tough job to do. But I think it's been made a lot harder now because of the fact that the black yard rule has come into effect. Now, I know we're digital, but don't worry, folks, we're not talking about referees because we haven't got enough tape even to talk about referees at this stage. But it's interesting that in, in you know, in the, the so-called, I'm not going to call them junior competitions, but the warm-up competitions like the McKenna Cup, the top referees now in the Auburn Cup are going to be used in those games by all accounts by the GEA so as they know what or when to use the black card and that players will get used to knowing what a black card is. Yeah, well, listen... Um what warrants a black card and what doesn't warrant a black card and, and the referees are human and they're like the players you know we're all going into these competitions we're unsure um, and you know it'll be trial and error for the referees as, as much as it will be for the players and it's good to see that the so-called top referees in, in the country will be used for the for the um, pre-national league competitions um, such as the McKenna Cup and so on but you know it'll be, it will be interesting to see how many cards they dished out in the first weekend. No, we'll see. Now, National League, I'm just looking at some of the odds here too, and I know you'll be interested in these ones with McLean's. National League Football League Division 2, Donegal 9-4, Down 10-3, Monaghan 6-1, Galway 7-1, Leash 8-1, and finally, Armagh 8-1 in Division 2. That'd be worth a bet. Absolutely, you know, um, I think Donegal are probably rightly favourites for, for that uh, division at 9-4, nine, nine all Iron Champions two years ago. Um, but you know, having a look down through the list, Armagh eight to one. There is a good hype about Armagh at the minute, and you know there is plenty of talent coming through. Um, eight to one, probably in past performances in, in recent years, um, maybe is is a fair enough, um, you know, odds. But you know, I think maybe looking at division division two, um, you have to say Monaghan would be 
you know, a, a good bet at six to one. Um, you know, the other current Ulster champions almost beat their own last year in the All Ireland quarter final, and you know, a team with a lot of young potential coming through as well. And at six to one, to be certainly value for the money. And Stevie, you know, the National League, we talk about it. I remember talking about it for years and doing facts and figures, and when it wasn't maybe the, the sexy thing to say, but if you did well in in the National League, you normally did well in the Championship. Yeah, well, it was proven last year, like you know, the, the last year's Division One final, Dublin to Rome. Both of them in, both of them in the last four. Any coincidence, the teams that have done well in the National League over the last 10, 15 years <coughs> have kicked on and have had a good run in, in the Championship as well. And you know, Dublin um, won the All Ireland last year on the back of winning the National League um, a few months beforehand as well. And you know, Cork's record as well over the past number of years in, in the National League ha has been exceptional, and they've always had an extended run in the Championship. So I think you know, um, county managers now realise the importance of a National League and and trying to get the, the right blend within the team come championship time and certainly the National League is a fantastic competition for, for trying to find out who your best 15 is and, and for blood and new players as well. Interesting now Division 1 just to do the stars I'll go through them quickly. Dublin 6-5, Mayo 9-2, Kerry 6 is along with Cork, Tyrone 7, Kildare 14-1, to one, Derry 20 and Westmeath 100-1. Yeah, well, <coughs> Dublin at six to five are you know everyone's favourites. They'll be the favourites for the All Ireland once again as well. And you know, um, I certainly think that you know that's the correct place for them to be. But um, you know, Cork at six to one. I think maybe I would maybe extend that a bit more, um, considering the amount of players they've lost and key players as well. Um, they've lost a stack of players, haven't they? Like? They've lost uh, you know a huge bulk of of their experienced players and. You know, for any team to do that uh, in one season um, is going to be a huge hole in, in any team. And you know, they are the leaders of the Cork team for the last five, six, seven years. And you know, they've been the driving force. So it'll be interesting to see how they react. And it'll be interesting to see how the youngsters coming through can blend in the team. Uh, you know, as as well. But you know, Kerry at six to one are always going to be there. There, but it's Mayo at nine to two. I think they're they're always a decent enough league team. And you know, they'll certainly push Dublin all the way. But you know, Dublin at six to five certainly um, are strong favourites for me in Division One. I always like the league. It's you know it's always interesting. You know, uh, I'm not too sure everybody's that particularly concerned whether they, they actually win it. In Division One, it's almost a case of just if you stay up, isn't it? Really, you know that's yeah, the key to the team, isn't it? Yeah, you know you always hear that banded about, all right. But you know, as a player. Um, each and every player on all of them teams want to go and win every match to play in, and that's the that's the reality of Gaelic games nowadays. Um, and as a player, winning the national league title is very important, you know. And when you look back in your career, and I'm fortunate enough to say that I, I've been lucky enough to win a national league title. It, it's certainly up there with with the, you know, the top accolades that I won. And you know, for all them players participating in Division One, Two, Three, and Four of national league, they'll be. Um, you know, Bell and, and, and going to win the, the title and, and not just accepting uh, competing. I'm going to lean across you here too because I want to get another no, everything. How many National League titles do you win? A Division 1 and Division 2. Did you fair play like that? And one all Ireland? Uh, I'm only yeah, sorry. Are you getting the wee dig in here? No, no, I'm only saying, no, very stupid. No, <laughs> I'm only joking. No, you know me. No, no, we go back to No, don't start that. <laughs> uh, the All Ireland Club Football, I want to get a wee mention about Dr. Croaks, 11 to 10, St. Vincent's 11 to 4, Ballandary 10 to 3, and Castle Bar 6 to 1. What do you think of those odds? Yeah, well, Dr. Croaks are many people's favourite. Um, you know, they've been there, there about the last couple of years, played in a couple of finals um, as well. and you know, obviously they've got the, Gooch, the Gooch in their ranks as well. But they have the Gooch too, who's never been the Player of the Year. Never been the Player of the Year, but um, you know, maybe next year could be easier. <laughs> you never know. But um, you know, St Vincent's are a decent uh, bet as well at eleven to four. Um, but I think Castlebar six to one. You know, uh, good outside bet. We have to remember that they beat the, the current All Ireland champions, and a six to one. You know, they might be worth looking at, but. Certainly, um, I still I still think Ballandary from Ulster have, have a good chance. You know, um, I've been at a couple of the matches this year. Very impressive in their victory over the Q and uh, in the Ulster semi. I enjoyed that victory. They did yeah. well. Comprehensive yeah. victory, actually. Very, very comprehensive victory. And in, in the Ulster final against Glenswilly, it took them a while to get into the game. But you know, once they got control of the game, they were always comfortable. Um, had a difficult task last weekend in London, but certainly Ballandary. Well, uh, won't fear um, the fact that they're going to be playing St Vincent's and you know it'll be an interesting battle and, and a game where Ballandary can certainly come out the right end of the result So you'd fancy him to beat Vincent's and what about then and obviously Crooks against Castle Bar yeah. Crooks with Gooch who's never been the player of the year you know, yeah, you've highlighted that once or twice. No, but he, he hasn't been the player of the year because he hasn't been good enough to be player of the year. I think he was unfortunate last year not to be in the frame because I thought he had a magnificent season last year and rolled back the clock. But I feel there's years that. 
he wasn't the player. I know Kerry got a bit of money, but he wasn't the player because he wasn't good enough to be player. I think year. maybe on that there, what we're looking at is a bit of consistency across the board, and, and Gooch has put in spectacular individual performances in, in certain matches, and maybe across the year, um, you know, it, it mm. hasn't warranted a football of the year, but which, which is a surprise. But you know, um, I look back at his performance last year in the All Ireland semi final, and oh, that's, yeah, that's no. his performance that I've ever seen at Crow Park. His vision and, and creativity alone, and the move out the centre half forward done him the world of good. And I think sometimes um, it can really take a player to the next level. And certainly last year, if, if the good continues to, to perform at that level, he he'll be he won't be far off. No, well, he is a quality player. player. Like you know, slag in a park. Like you know, uh, well, giving a wee bit of a dig from Tyrone. But what odds? Anyway, there you go. The All Ireland. Now we're going to move now to the All Ireland Senior Football Championship. And I know it's the start of the year, and everybody you know thinks they've got a great opportunity. But I'm just going to go through a few of them here. Look, it, it's the usual suspects. It's Dublin uh, fifteen to eight. Uh, Mayo 9-2, Kerry 11-2, Cork 7, Donegal 8, Tyrone 16 and then the, the nearest after that is Kildare 33-1. to one. What do you think of those odds? Yeah well once again you know the, the one that jumps out of me is Cork at 7-1. Um, although they were beating the All Ireland under 21 final last year with Galway you know I just don't think the players coming through will be as good as the players that ha- have recently retired. Um, so I wouldn't have them uh, as high as seven to one. Donegal at eight to one. You know they'll be hurting a lot from last year. Can they bounce back? Um, they certainly, you know, have the big game experience over the last couple of years of, of playing and producing it. Um, thrown still at sixteen to one are are value for me. You know they'll always uh, be there thereabouts. Um, come the later stages of the of the All Ireland, but I have to look at um, my own county Armagh at eighty to one. Um, you know the RK yeah, I even have to pause it 80 to 1 I, I can't believe some of the teams that are in front of Arma yeah well neither can I if I'm totally honest and you know they are playing a Cavan team in the first round of the championship in Arma who are 40 to 1 you know and Cavan are maybe 41 on the back of last year's uh, performance and their own championship which is uh, fair enough but you know Arma against Cavan this year I, I certainly believe will be a lot um, harder for Cavan to come out with the result um, I'm not saying they won't win the match but you you know, Arma will push them all the way this year, and you know when you look at Down and Galway at fifty to one um, above them, you know I, I certainly believe that Arma are as good or, or can certainly compete with these teams. So eighty to one would be a good outside bet for me, and and quarter finals, semi final stages certainly um, achievable for Arma. Right, we're going to stop flying that Arma flags. We've enough trouble with flags nowadays, but anyway, yeah. anyway they're eighty we're to one. Just but away from the <laughs> <Trump flag. laughs> but uh, Dublin fifteen to eight. Uh, is that your tip for the All Ireland again? Do you think? Do you think they? They can retain it, which would be a marvellous achievement if they did. Yeah, Dublin are the benchmark. You know, they've set the standard over the last couple of years, and, and certainly last year they produced the goods in the National League and the All Ireland series. Um, at 15 to 8, yes, they're rightly so. They are a lot of people's favourites, and you know, they take a very t- a good team uh, to topple Dublin this year, or next year. Um, who's capable of doing it? You have to look at Mayo, Kerry on their day, or certainly um, capable of doing it. I still believe. Thrown under they can beat Dublin as well, but you know, um, at the minute Dublin are, are still above every other team in the county, and you know they're setting the standards in terms of ability and, and fitness as well. I'm sort of fed up with Mayo, but you know, like I know Mayo people got on my case last year, you know, but like why was that? Ah, well, because you know Mayo promised so much and then delivered so little. And like, I, like, you know, people think I was against Mayo. I'm not against Mayo. You know, I have in-laws and outlaws from Mayo. You know what I mean? And I know what they're like. But you know, look, even the reaction in All Ireland uh, yeah. from Mayo people after the lost yeah. was, ah, well, we lost the All Ireland for someone. Yeah, I, th- I think you know, players and, and fans alike, you know, can be very frustrating uh, to be from Mayo uh, on occasions. But certainly, you know, they're consistently getting to the finals, and the more they get the finals, you know, someday they're going to eventually win one. And you know, if that that's all you can ask from a player's point of view is that they keep uh, pushing themselves to the limit to try to get there. And you know, as I said, you know, they were they only beat last year by a point, and they are still an improving side, and they've got a fantastic manager in James Horn. So, I still believe that he can maybe squeeze a wee bit more life out of this Mayo team, and they'll certainly be there thereabouts this year again. So, would you put the two finalists, you know, the winners Dublin and Mayo, would be as a dark well, horse? Would that be your choice or whatever they got for me? Mayo was a dark horse. I, I think a team that could surprise a lot of people this year would be Derry. Um, you know, forty to one in the betting there. You know, a team full of potential and talent, and you know, big and strong as well, and can certainly mix it with the best. And Fergal Doherty back in the side this year as well. A good experience uh, midfielder, and you know, I think they could be a surprise package for a lot of people, and you know, could go a long distance in the championship. 
I'll ask you an easy one then before we've got a free bet here, obviously for Cash for Kids, courtesy of McLean's, which we, we always do for our, for our guests. But I'll give you an easy one. Who's going to win the Ulster title? The Ulster title will be, <laughs> you know, will be very difficult. Um, Monaghan will be looking to, to win it for the second year in the trot. Donegal will be hurting a lot from their Ulster final appearance last year. Um, as were Tyrone, you know, they'll always be there or thereabouts. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to go with... Um, I'm going to go with maybe a Donegal victory this year. I think you know Jim McGuinness and his and his troops will be hurting a lot. As I said, they have the big game experience. They'll want to get some titles under their belt, and, and you know that could be starting with, with an Ulster title. Well, they're the favourites at fifteen to eight, followed by uh, Tyrone at uh, th- uh, three to one, and then yourselves, Armagh six to one. Yeah, well, that's surprising at six to one for Ulster and, and at eighty to one for the All Ireland. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, and above Who's doing these odds? You know, <laughs> you know, you know, listen. Um, as I say, and I, I say it every year, uh, there's a lot of talent in Arma, and it's a, it's a case of trying to gel that talent together and getting the best out of the teams. Um, it hasn't happened for Arma over the last couple of years, so based on that, you know, I wouldn't be tipping in win Ulster. But um, you know, if you're based on the last couple of years, Donegal and Throne are going to be the two teams to beat in Ulster. So it's just for summation: Donegal, Throne, the teams to beat in Ulster, and Mayo and Dublin. Possibly the teams to win in the All Ireland series. I think still the two key teams in the All Ireland stage, you know, and um, with a few surprise teams maybe coming through the ranks and, and maybe being able to cause an upset as well. And was interesting you mentioned Derry as well too. I think are a strong yeah. side as well too. Yeah, I think Derry, um, you know, potentially um, can cause a, an upset and get an extended run championship. And you know, it all depends on how to go in Ulster early on. You know, if they build up a bit of confidence, there'll be certainly hard teams to stop. 